Hey guys, thank you so much for the love and support on all of my shorts so far. Um, this is going to be my first long form video on YouTube. So I decided to show you how to make some salted caramels because it's actually a very simple recipe. It just takes a lot of attention. Um, so right now I just have a half cup of butter and a half cup of heavy cream melting together. Um, that's what I'm watching right now and stirring. Um, that's just gonna melt together and you'll set it aside for later. Um, I also have a loaf pan here that's prepped and ready with a piece of buttered parchment paper just so that the caramels don't stick. Um, and then aside from the butter and cream, the other ingredients you'll use are corn syrup, white sugar, sea salt, and a little bit of water. So the butter and cream mixture is almost completely melted together. I'll just turn off the heat. And then I have my bigger pot over here for the caramels. Um, you're gonna make sure to have a bigger pot than you think you would need because the caramels do boil up um, when you add the cream and butter mixture. So just account for the room that you'll need for it to boil up. Okay, so in our pot here, we're gonna add one cup of sugar, and then we're gonna do a quarter cup of the light corn syrup. I'm just gonna eyeball it. It's a little much. then about three tablespoons of water. And then you're just gonna give it a stir so that the sugar is all covered by the water or else it'll burn. Do not want that. Turn this to medium, medium lowish. You also, um, for the caramels, are going to want a candy thermometer. Um, temperature is really important here for the right consistency. Um, if you let it go too hot, too long, the caramels will be harder. Um, and too short on the stove or too low for heat, uh, they won't harden at all, so. And then we're just gonna heat this on medium until the sugar starts boiling and just keep stirring it so it doesn't stick to the bottom. And I need my thermometer. Okay, the sugar is boiling now, so I just covered it, and you're gonna keep it covered for one minute. Um, this is so that the condensation can form and uh, trap some of the water back into the mixture. I don't know if you can see, but there's like a little drip of condensation right there. That's what you want, is for this lid to trap in the water and release it back into the mixture. All right, it's been about a minute, so I'm just gonna take the lid off, put that water in there, and put the thermometer in. We're looking for a temperature of 320 degrees. I'm just gonna stir the bottom of this here. I also don't know how to use this thermometer how to put it in and move it on the side. <laughs> okay, that's about right. Um, 
We're at about 175 right now, so I'm just gonna let this go for another like five minutes it should take. And while we're waiting, I'll introduce myself a little since I'm kind of new here on YouTube and I've been getting some new followers every day. Uh, my name is Sarah. I am a new mom and a stay-at-home mom, so cooking is one of my very big hobbies. It's my love language. I'm always cooking for my fiance and my baby. Um, finding new recipes, new desserts. I love cooking. It's, I find it to be therapeutic and it's kind of like an art form. So, um, 25 years old. Uh, my fiance and I, we've been together for almost three years. Um, we've tried the homesteading lifestyle and we both love it. It was just a lot this past year. Um, we had our baby around the time that um, it was time to have the chickens processed. Um, so it was just, it was a lot for us, but we're looking to get back into it this next year. Um, we loved raising chickens and pigs, um, veggie garden, all of that. It's nice to have your own food. Um, we actually still have a lot of our chickens in our freezer. And a lot of our pig meat too, our pork, because we had pigs two years ago. Um, and we actually still have those meat from that. Sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once here. Just blabbing on. Alright, we're at about 220 right now, so I'm just going to let this go a little bit longer. Okay, so our thermometer is at about almost 320, 325-ish. And you can see it's a beautiful golden color. Sometimes if there's not enough liquid on the um, thing, it won't give an accurate reading. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna pour in the butter and cream mixture and you'll see how much it goes up. You could also pour it in um, a little bit at a time, like in thirds, just so it's not so bubbly like this. Um, and you want to get the temperature back up to 240. It's going to drop a little because um, the cream and butter mixture is obviously cooler. Um, but it's at about three, I mean, 230 right now. Um, so I'll let this just go another minute. And this is why I say it takes up a lot of attention because you really have to keep stirring it and just keep your eye on the thermometer. But it's very worth it because you get delicious caramels and it actually makes a, a lot. Like, well, we'll see at the end when I start to cut them up. <laughs> pan lined with parchment here and I'm just gonna pour this mixture right in Oops. 
And then I'm just gonna let this cool on the counter for like 30 minutes, so I'm not putting it in the refrigerator scorching hot. And then after that, I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for three to four hours. Um, but you'll be able to tell when it's set by just tapping the top of them. Um, what it looks like when it's freshly poured in. That beautiful golden color, nice and dark. Okay, the caramels have been resting for about 30 minutes on the counter. Um, so I'm just gonna sprinkle them with some of the sea salt. You don't wanna do this right away because the salt will just melt right into the caramels. Um, this way it just kind of sets on top and gives it that classic salted caramel look. All right, so I let the caramels chill in the refrigerator. I actually let them go overnight. Um, and it's nice and set, and I'm just working on cutting them and wrapping them. Um, so yeah. You might be surprised with how many this makes depending on how large or small you prefer your caramels. Um, I feel like I go a little bit bigger than I should, but that's okay. And I just place them in the middle of the parchment, fold over the sides, and then twist the ends. Caramel's a little hard right now because I just took it out of the refrigerator. But as you let it sit out at room temperature, it does get softer. So. These make a great little gift if you're into giving candies or foods for holidays, um, special occasions. It's something different. People don't really expect salted caramels, I feel, so just a nice little surprise for someone. These are actually a lot easier to work with than I'm used to because I think I just, I let them go a little bit longer than I should yesterday and they got harder than normal, which I'm not really complaining about because I don't mind the hard caramels. Um, I know most people prefer the soft. All right, so I'm just wrapping up my last caramel here. Um, I didn't end up dipping any in chocolate. I wanted to try that, but I'm feeling lazy, so I might just try it later. <laughs> but yeah, all together, this probably made about 40 caramels, not including the ones that I ate. <laughs> Um, but yeah, here they are, all wrapped up. So this is how you make caramels. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. I will be coming out with more videos, shorts, long form content. Um, I'm just kind of getting into the whole YouTube thing, so uh, bear with me as I learn um, what kind of content to put out there. 
Um, but again, thank you so much for the early support, um, likes, comments, all of that. I really do appreciate it. Thank you.